So hello and welcome to another episode of Top 10s. I'm your host, Carl Small, and today we're talking about 10 things that aren't from where you think they are from, based on an original article by Radu Alexander. If you say the pyramids, you think of Egypt. If you say deep dish pizza, you think, man, that sucks. But also Chicago. There are certain things, be they food, giant ancient structures, or anything in between, that are inexorably linked to a specific place. But that does not necessarily mean they originated in those places, as you're about to find out. Number 10. The Great Dane. So, with a name like The Great Dane, you would think that the origins of this popular dog breed would be obvious, but not quite so. The gentle giant does not come from Denmark, but from Germany. And we can put the blame on the French for this mix-up, something as an Englishman I wholeheartedly support. From the 16th century, German nobles began importing mastiffs and other large breeds from England to use mainly for hunting. For the next few hundred years, these dogs were bred without any formal guidelines and were simply known as, and this is going to be difficult to pronounce, Einschleigerhund or English Hound. The animal became extremely popular though and in 1876 it was declared the national breed of Germany and was also given the proper name of the Deutsch Dog which is still the name used for the breed in the country. For reasons which remain unknown, when the dog started being imported into France, the French decided to call it instead the Great Danois, or Great Dane. The name stuck around when the breed made its way over to England, and it's been confusing people ever since. Number 9. Venetian Blinds. Just like the Great Dane, the name Venetian Blinds is a bit of a misnomer. Although the Venetian traders deserve credit for introducing these window coverings to Europe during the mid-18th century, they picked up the design on their travels to the Middle East, specifically to Persia. While we can't really say how or when they first appeared in Persia, we do know that similar and much more basic blackout curtains have been used in ancient Egypt and China, where they were made out of reeds or bamboo. As to who came up with the name Venetian blinds, that's hard to say. It wasn't the French this time, they actually called them Les Persiennes, um, staying true to their origin. All we really know is that by the time Englishman Edward Bevan received a patent for the curtains with a new pulley system in 1778, they were already referred to as Venetian window blinds. Number 8. Piñata. Although nowadays the piñata can be found at children's parties all over the world, it is still strongly associated with Mexican culture. Its true origins, however, are a bit more mysterious and controversial than that. Now, there are two schools of thought here. Some believe that the piñata did in fact originate in Mesoamerica during the time of the Aztecs. They were in the habit of decorating clay pots with feathers, filling them with ornaments and smashing them with sticks as an offering to their gods. Others, however, disagree. A, a true piñata, after all, is made of papier-mâché, so it makes sense for it to come out of the land where paper originated. China. When exactly this would have happened, we cannot really say, because just like with the Venetian blinds, we only found out about it when European traders and other merchants brought them back home. Marco Polo saw Chinese piñatas on his travels and described them as various animal figures, coloured in coloured paper and filled with seeds, which were smashed open with sticks during the New Year's celebrations. Marco Polo brought this tradition to Italy, where piñatas were used to celebrate the holiday of Lent, and from there the custom spread to other European countries, including Spain, who eventually brought the tradition to the New World. Number 7. Danish Pastries Here we have another Danish product that has nothing to do with Denmark, the Danish pastry. Though to be fair to the Danes, they are at least upfront about it. They don't even call the pastry Danish. They refer to it as... Wiener Bread which is Vienna bread, or simply Viennese, to signal that it was first introduced to the country by Austrian bakers around the mid-19th century. But even so, it's not the Austrians who deserve credit for the tasty treat either. The Danish Bakers' Union recognised a French apprentice baker named Claudius Jolie as the creator of the doughy concoction some 400 years ago. One day, while Jolie was preparing a new batch of dough, he forgot to add any butter to the flour. He tried to correct his mistake by folding lumps of butter into the dough, and to his surprise, the resulting mixture was the fluffiest, lightest dough Jolie had ever seen. Realising that he was on something special with this new discovery, Julie opened his own cafe in Paris in 1622, and his new pastry became an instant hit, quickly spreading to nearby countries. Number 6. Frog's legs. Are you telling me someone invented frog's legs? Frog's legs are a dish that we immediately and inexorably link with France, but not so fast, because according to a few archaeologists in England, they claim that the English have been eating them for thousands of years before they ever made their way across the channel. Archaeologists from the University of Buckingham have excavated a dig site in Wiltshire, close to Stonehenge, which resulted in a massive treasure trove of over 12,000 Mesolithic artefacts, including one of the largest collection of cooked animal bones in all of Europe. Among the animals that people used to eat here around 8,000 years ago were, you guessed it, Ribbit. frogs and toads. Meanwhile, the earliest source of the French feasting on frog's legs is only dated to around the 12th century AD, in the annals of the Catholic Church. Number 5. The Bagpipes there is no doubt that the most popular version of the bagpipes, which is the Great Highland Bagpipes, came from Scotland. Unfortunately, there is also the doubt that bagpipes themselves have been around for over a thousand years by that point. 
although exact origin still remains a mystery. For example, there's a 3,000 year old Hittite sculpture that something could represent bagpipes, though it's not exactly a certainty. A more solid source comes from the ancient Egypt in around 400 BC, where the Pipers of Thebes represent the earliest known named bagpipers, who were said to play instruments made of dog skins and charters of bone, probably where the Romans got it from. And the Romans were also most likely the ones to bring the bagpipes to Scotland. Before that, the most popular musical instrument around was the Orlos, a Greek double pipe. However, the Orlos required the musician to constantly puff out his cheeks, and this caused a facial disfiguration known as the reproach of Athena. The bagpipes solved this issue, and while the Greeks preferred to stick with their Orlos, the Romans adopt this new instrument with enthusiasm. Um, historian Dio Christostom even writes an unnamed king who likes to play the bagpipes, and I quote, both by means of his lips and by tucking a skin beneath his armpits with a view avoiding the reproach of Athena. <laughs> the French horn. Oh, come on. From an ancient musical instrument, we move on to a more recent one with a more certain origin, the French horn. Over the last century or so, the French horn has become not only one of the world's most popular instruments, but... Uh, you know, an indispensable component of any self-respecting brass section. And since it is featured on this list, there's also another characteristic worth highlighting. It's not French. Various horns have existed for hundreds of years, but it was two German makers named Heinrich Stolzel and Frederick Billumel, huh? Billme, who came up with the idea of adding valves to control the pitch and stabilize the tones. And thus, the French horn was born. But it wasn't exactly welcome with open arms, as many composers rejected the innovation. Um, Karl Maria von Weber described the sound made by the French horn as, and I quote, intolerable. While others, such as Mendelhausen and Brahms, felt that their works were composed with a natural horn in mind, I had no desire to make the switch. It wasn't until a hundred years later that the British virtuoso Dennis Brain popularised the French horn as an instrument. Number three, German chocolate cake. You probably figured out by now that because something has the word German in its name, it does not make it German. But in this particular case, we have an even strange situation because the cake is correctly named. Not after someone of German origins, but after someone with a surname, German. During the mid-19th century, English-American baker Sam German worked for the Baker's Chocolate Company. In 1852, he created a new type of baking chocolate, which the company named in his honour and sold as Baker's German Sweet Chocolate. This was a bit of a mouthful, so it wasn't long until they dropped the Baker's part. It simply became known as German's Sweet Chocolate. Fast-forwarding 100 years to 1957, we have a Texas homemaker named Mrs. George Clay, who came up with a recipe for the now iconic cake, and it got published in the Dallas Morning Star. People loved this recipe, and General Foods, the company that owned Baker's Chocolate, made sure that the entire country heard of this new delicious cake made using their special chocolate, except for they decided to drop the apostrophes from the Germans, so now everyone believed the cake had German origins. Number two, haggis. So we've already gone after one iconic Scottish symbol, and now we have to go after another. Their beloved national dish, no less, haggis. And to make matters even worse, it seems that haggis might actually be English. It is simply a matter of the earliest recorded sources. The first Scottish mention of haggis comes from 1747. A few decades later, Scotland's national poet, Robbie Burns, immortalised the dish in a poem, Address to a Haggis, and definitively cemented it as a staple of Scottish culture. Unfortunately, the first English mention of haggis is over 100 years older, and comes in the form of a 1615 cookbook titled The English Huswife by Gervais Markham. Of course, this does not mean conclusively that the dish is English, simply that they were the first ones to write about it. And there are opinions that haggis might be even older than that and have Scandinavian origins, possibly even Roman. Number one, the boomerang. The boomerang is a weapon that we immediately associate with Australia and with good reason. Aboriginal people have been using it for thousands of years. It's even featured in the Aboriginal creation myth, where the ancestors form rivers and mountains by throwing boomerangs into the earth. The oldest boomerang found in Australia is around 10,000 years old, but there are rock art paintings depicting boomerangs that are twice as old as that. With that kind of pedigree, surely the boomerang has to have Australian origins, right? Well, it's still possible, but at the moment the oldest known boomerang in the world comes from not from Australia, but from Europe. Reportedly in the Obnoosa cave in Poland, to be exact, where a two foot long boomerang made out of mammoth tusk has been dated to 23,000 years ago. And it's possible that there's one found in Austria that might be even older, but this one has not yet been accurately dated. So thank you for watching this Top 10's video about 10 things that aren't from where you think they're from. As noted at the start of this video, uh, the video was based on an original article by Radu Alexander. If they provided some socials for us, they'll no doubt be linked below for you to follow at your leisure. I've been your host, Carl Smallwood. I also host um, for the sister channel Biographics and Geographics, so as my own channel, Fact Theme with Carl Smallwood, as well as uh, guest hosting on another channel, Wiki Weekends. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, like, you know, let us know in the comments, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, have the day you deserve. <coughs>